this farm has been passed down through the family for a long time. It's a part of us, it's a part of our family, it's a part of me, it's a part of my kids. So it means a lot to us. My great-grandfather started and he had Hereford cattle back in, in those days and uh, cattle have always been a part of this area and, okay. and this farm. Back in the early years, cattle had their places in the pasture and they'd be put in a pasture as the grazing season began and that would be where they would be at until it was time to come off. And I think now it's totally away from that. We start according to the grasses that are available in, in different, and we're gonna call them traps instead of pastures now because we, we've cut them down into smaller acres. We will graze early season grasses earlier okay. in the spring and then the warm season grasses during the summertime. And then we go in and start utilizing uh, some aftermath grazing and uh, some cover crop grazing on into the fall and, and maybe even into the winter months. Weather is a little in, unpredictable up here. And I think everybody's getting a lot more uh, broad-minded about being able to utilize not just the production of a cereal grain crop, but also the byproducts that can be utilized from not only the production of that crop, but opportunities for cover crop maybe after that crop's harvested. And especially useful when they enhance each other in, in the system where your corn, wheat, and beans is your rotation. You graze, uh, say you plant a cover crop, or even the residue of, uh, say, the corn, and you're grazing your cow herd out there, increasing microbial activity through the whole system. To me, resilience, uh, longevity enters into that quality of the environment, and that goes right along with water holding capacity of the soil, the microbial activity in the soil, and the production you're getting off of it and still maintaining the level of quality in the soil along with also being a profitable entity for the farm.